This is part five of the metal lathe project working on the cross slide. I've got here the saddle, the lead screw, and the linear rails for the cross slide. And uh, today I'm gonna be slowly starting to uh, fasten them down. Drilling holes in the cross slide was way nicer than drilling holes in the steel inserts of the main body. The drill press just made things so much easier, having things square and just being able to drill so much faster than the portable drill press and a hand drill. This is an M5 tap, tapping about a three quarter inch hole in steel, so I was pretty concerned about snapping the tap. I ended up drilling a 964 hole, which is a little bit oversized. And that turned out to be a great solution because there's still plenty for the bolt to bite into. I couldn't get it to strip no matter what I did. But at the same time, it was much easier than if I drilled the correct size hole for it. I'm doing this the exact same way I did the main rails. Drilling the first hole, straightening the rail, drilling the last hole, and then once I have those two bolts in, marking all the center holes and then drilling them. This ended up working really well for the main rails and it worked really well for this too. The first two holes take a little bit of measurement, but once you have those in, marking the rest of the holes with a transfer punch takes all of 30 seconds and drilling them is not too bad either. The marks for my transfer punch aren't very deep, so it's a lot better if I use a separate center punch to deepen them. It makes the uh, drill bit sit way better in the little divot and tends to slide around a lot less. Here I'm test fitting all the bolts for the very first time, putting them in, checking to make sure that I have some kind of play and that they all actually fit, and they did, which was great. Now I'm getting a quick measurement for where my second rail is gonna go to mark the very first hole. I'm using gauge blocks here because I didn't think that I could fit my indicator in the space. It's only about five inches between those two rails, but I actually was able to fit it pretty easily and pretty quickly started using that instead of trying to slide the gauge blocks back and forth.
Same concept as before, once I had the first bolt in, I ran my indicator up and down the rail to get it about parallel, and then once it was good, I marked the last hole with my transfer punch. After marking all the center holes, I went through and drilled each one, and then I'm going to tap them, and then my second rail will be roughed in. After I countersunk and tapped the holes, there was a whole bunch of metal filings and dust in there and chips. I found out that one of the most effective ways to remove all that is actually taking a can of WD-40, squirting it into the bottom of the hole, and as the oil comes up, it pushes all the chips out the sides. I'm sure this would be way better with a can of compressed air or pressurized air if I had it, but that really turns out to be the, my best option right now. And it worked pretty well. Here the cross slide is finally starting to actually take shape. You can see the rails with the first car on and my ball screw in between. I just placed an order for a bunch of KO wool and fire brick to make myself a brand new forge to melt down some cast iron. And I'd love for the actual carriage here to be a cast iron piece that I cast myself to bridge between the two uh, sets of cars and hold this nut in place. If this doesn't work, I could use steel and just mill it out with a large drill bit and all that. That would be really cool to make it cast iron myself. Short video this week, but thanks for watching. Next week I'll be squaring the cross slide to the main rails and having it fastened down to the lathe body. That'll be really exciting. Thanks.